Praise the Lord, everybody. I want to welcome everybody Amen. to Christ the Lord, Christ Alive here on Tuesday evening. It's our Tuesday evening Bible study. Amen. And I'm glad to see everybody that's going to be out there. And Lord bless all of you. Yes. Love you all. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is so wonderful to be here. Um, as always, um, we want to make sure that um, that we bring all of our prayer needs that we have, and Amen. we actually do have quite a few. Um, we want to pray for the Villanueva family, as well as um, Raul Rodriguez family, uh, Pastor Cruz, and Amen. Sister Tammy, and the Polito family, and all those that are still um, under the sickness that's been going around. Uh, we know that you know we got to treat this seriously, but also we have a God that is powerful Amen. that yes. can that will yeah. can heal our needs. Amen. The Bible says it's through His stripes we are healed, That's yes. right. and so every single need that we have, we can bring it before the Lord, and He will answer it. Yes. And so will. we're gonna pray. Um, also, we're gonna pray for the remainder of this service and for the lesson that's going to be taught here tonight Amen. and so let us all bow our heads let us go before the Lord and expect great things so Lord Jesus we thank you God for everything that you have done Lord we worship you God for all that you have and who you are Lord Jesus God we come to you Lord for each and every need in this place Lord we see those that are struggling with COVID right now more than ever God Hallelujah, Jesus, that you would begin to move on Pastor Cruz's body, Lord. Sister Tammy Solis' family, God. For the Villanueva family, Jesus. For the Raul Rodriguez family, Lord. For all of those that are sick in their bodies, Lord Jesus. For all those that are struggling, God, we come before you, Lord. Faith believing that you will do the great work. We thank you, God. We praise you, Lord, that you will take care of our needs, Lord. We come to you, God. We cast our cares upon you, Jesus. We worship your name, Lord. We praise you, God, for your tender mercies, God, that you have bestowed upon us, Lord. We worship you, God. We praise you, for you are awesome. You are an awesome God, powerful and mighty. We believe that you will do the work here tonight in this service and to all those that are sick in body. Hallelujah, Jesus. We worship you. We praise you, God. We give you the glory and honor in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We expect God to do many great things. And so we're going to continue on in service with singing. And so we're going to get into worship and worship with us as we sing. Towards me. 
We give you praise. We worship you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. to be here tonight and um, my lesson tonight is on we need the Lord and as as <laughs> brother Dario has stated that he says that I'm always uh, moving and doing things for the Lord 
when you have lived a life in sin oh, and you Jesus. have been out there and doing all manner of Jesus. when you come to the Lord you come with the gratitude oh, yes. And, yes. And, and an expectation yes. that your Lord will use me for whatever you yes. need me to be yes. use my hands use my feet oh, and use these lips and so tonight I have the privilege oh, yes. To share with you a word from the Lord. Thank you, Lord. And our lesson is, we need the Lord. Amen. Brother Dario, would you pray for yes. our, our lesson tonight? Thank you. God, hallelujah. God, that the word that she talks to the Lord, that she talks to us tonight, God, that they go forward, God, and it will touch somebody's heart, that it will be this word that she's going to teach us tonight, that will go out and touch somebody out there, God, that need God, that don't know God. Hallelujah. We need God all the time. I thank you, Lord, for Sister Vicky. Bless her, God. Give you the anointing of the Holy Spirit upon her, God. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Amen. Our lesson text is Obadiah, chapter 1, verse 1 through 4, and 17 through 21. Obadiah 1 and 1. The vision of Obadiah, thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord. And an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Yes. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. Yes. The pride yes. of thine heart hath deceived thee, that thou dwellest in the clefts of the rocks, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, Who shall bring me down oh, to the ground? Oh, Though thou exalt thyself as an eagle, and thou... And though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Amen. Yes. Verse 17. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, yes. and yes. the house of Jacob shall possess mm -hmm. his, their possessions. Oh, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, mm -hmm. and the house of Esau for stubble. And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining in the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. Amen. And Hallelujah. they of the south shall possess the mount of Esau, and they of the plain the Philistines, and they shall possess the fields of Ephraim and the fields of Samaria, and Benjamin shall possess Gilead. And the captivity of this host of the children of Israel shall possess that of the Canaanites, even unto Zarephath, and the captivity of Jerusalem which is in Sepharad, shall possess the cities of the south. And saviors shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount yeah. of Esau, and the kingdom shall be the Lord's. Amen. Our, focus, our focus verse is Obadiah 1.3. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, oh, thou that dwelleth in the clefts of the good. rocks, Hallelujah. whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down? Praise God for his word. I'm so thankful for the word. Yes. We need yeah. the Lord. Right now, going through everything that we are, are seeing, the earthquakes, the sicknesses, the pestilence, the rumors of war, yes. we do not have time just to play around and play uh, Amen. You know, play church. We need to get serious with God. Yes. Amen. Everything Amen. is fast-paced. And um, if you see my post on Facebook about a year ago, I, I, I settled in my heart and I told God, God, the first thing that I do when I wake up in the morning, let this mouth yes. praise you. Ooh, let this yes. mouth yes. 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 let these lips yes. exalt you, for you are a great and holy oh. God. And so it, it is my dedication, and, 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 and try it, make it yours. When you before your feet hit the the ground oh, in the morning, give oh, God all honor and glory because yeah. it's the power of God that has opened your eyes, yeah. that has moved your body. We do not realize and we take for granted the life oh, yes. that God blesses with every day. And during this this pandemic, everybody is so fast paced. We're we're uh, in a hurry to get from here to there, and 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 there's all these free programs because of what we're going through and people are, are taking advantage of 
the assistance for the utilities, your yeah. rental assistance, yeah. your food lines, your food pantries, yeah. and, and granted, yeah. unemployment assistance, medical assistance, oh, financial oh, assistance okay. for your rent, and granted, it's all needed, but there are those that, and, and, and we have read it on social media, that are abusing the system yeah. as well. Yeah. And everywhere you go, I've never in my life seen so many help wanted signs in yeah. every place that yeah. we go. Yeah. With everything that's uh -huh. going on, the demand for employment is out there. Yes. And if you want to be employed, you can have a job. That's right. All of which is needed. And First Timothy 5 8 st states, but if any provide not for his own, and especially for those of his own house, yes. he hath denied the faith and is worse than an infidel. Right. The yes. Lord wants us to sustain ourselves. The That's Lord true. wants us yes. to provide yes. for our house. Yes. Our government doesn't care about the word of God. And like the shortcuts that they offer for us to not to get in there and, and, and provide wholeheartedly, they are shortcuts in salvation and in the word of God. You have these, oh, just, just believe and he will save you. Yeah. Or oh, just accept Jesus as your personal savior. It's all good, it's easy yeah. peasy. Yeah. I'll give you a card and you, you just show up for service and you are saved. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. that is not salvation. That's right. Amen. That's right. When you search the scriptures, we dig into the word of God. Let's not take the word of God for granted. Let's not take the word of God at someone else's word. Let us Jesus, have an experience with God. Hallelujah. We need Amen. an experience with God. Mm -hmm. When I was out in the world, I craved something. There was an emptiness inside me. And that emptiness, this body, this creation craved a communion yes. with its creator. Hallelujah. I didn't Hallelujah. know it yeah. when I was in the world yeah. because mm -hmm. I didn't know Jesus. Hallelujah. I didn't know God like I have experienced him today. So I want to share my testimony. Uh, my husband Jesus. and I had lived a bad life. We went, I ended up in jail and I got out before he did and there was a phone, right? So he calls me and he tells me, hey, there's a sister, come go to the church with her. She's going to take you to church and you know, and, and when I get out, I'll go. And I'm like, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go. You go by yourself. Well, that six years and eight months that he was looking at, the Lord intervened and it turned to six months. All and right. so before Hallelujah. I had the ability to back out and not go, he was out and we were in church. Praise and this is how God. ignorant I was of the things of God. We were in this little Pentecostal church and Brother Dutchie Clayton was Jesus. preaching and they were taking up an offering and I was sitting there and it was like the Lord just was dealing with me and, and I, I wasn't aware of it but it was like the words just went away and I started watching other people I started seeing everyone that was sitting there and, and they were different than from what I look like and I remember it just you know his words came back to me and he's taking up an offering he says oh, it's Sunday night we're gonna take up tithes and offerings and I'm thinking tithes I didn't know what tithes were mm -hmm. I, I mean I, I came from the Catholic faith you throw the dollar in the basket and you're good for the week and you know that was it. You know, I, I hate to say it, but that was and that was my you know that was my righteous duty, and I thought, hey, you know, I'm going to heaven this way. But as that basket kept going by, I noticed that people were tossing envelopes and and, and money, but there was no tides going in that basket, to my understanding. And I, I elbowed my husband and I said, hey, babe, I said, how come then none of the guys are giving him any tides? Nobody wants to give him a tithe. I thought, I, my understanding was they want, he wanted ties and nobody was forking over a tie. So, you know, he just kind of just looked at me and he shook his head no, like, be quiet. And so I'm sitting there like, go, oh, we're going to discuss this when I get out of here, right? And so to make a long story short, um, we decided, you know, he gave me the rundown after we got home and I was like, oh, really? Okay. And so, you know, we started reading the scriptures and started going to different sisters and brothers' homes, and we were having Bible study. And I remember, I said, I, I, we're going to be baptized. So that a couple of weeks later, he says, okay, when I get home from work Sunday, because he, he worked at Derry, he says, uh, we're going to go get baptized, and it was a Sunday morning service. And um, I said, okay. But that Sunday morning, I got sick. He went to work and I got sick. I started getting a fever. I started getting the sweats and I was ill. 
deathly ill. When he came home, he shoots in, and the brother, Brother Leon, was going to take us, and he came in, and uh, he says, are you ready? And I said, I'm not going to do it. I I'm sick. And my husband says, well, I'm taking a shower, and I'm going. And I laid there thinking, no, he's not going to go without me. And sure enough, he comes out, and I said, hey, where are you going? And he says, I'm going to church. I'm going to get baptized. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, wait, wait. So I just put my hair in a ponytail, slapped on some oh, shoes, and, and, and I ran out with him. And I said, I'm not going to sit where we always sat. I said, I'm going to sit back by the bathroom because I'm sick. So I kept getting up, dry heaving and everything. And at the end of service, the pastor, uh, Dutchie, says, we're having two baptisms. He says, uh, Brother Greg and Sister Vicky." And I remember Sister Lamb took me back and, and grabbed me a dress and was taking me. And as we were getting through the, the kitchen, I was really feeling like dizzy and everything, so I was ho holding myself up with the wall. And he went first, and then he says, it's Sister Vicky's turn. And I, and I walked up and, and got up on the little ladder and went in the water. Once I went in the water, he you know, said, we're going to baptize you in the name of Jesus. And, and I went down in the water and came up, and I was I knew Ooh, I wanted the Holy Ghost, yeah, right? Yeah. So I was like, yes, I want the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Yeah. And I got out of there, changed and everything, and Sister Lamb says, how do you feel, sis? And I said, I feel wonderful. I feel so good. I said, yes. so, because I knew Thank when you I know. came out of that water, I had no sin. The Word oh, of God yeah. says yeah. that when you go down yeah. in that water yeah. and you yeah. come up, you are a new creature. Yeah. And I, 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 didn't want to, I didn't want to talk to nobody because, you know, I knew where I came from. And I said, if I say anything wrong, you know, right now I have no sin. So, and she says, so, she goes, you're not sick. And I said, sick? And she said, well, you were sick when you got here. And I said, no, no, I Ooh, felt wonderful. Yeah, right. And oh, I knew yes, then yes, yes. that the enemy of my soul followed me to the edge of the water. Oh, but that was as Jesus. far as he could go. Yes, so right. so right. tonight, yeah. if you need to fill that emptiness in your heart, Get a hold of the oh, Lord. Man. Cry out to God, and he's as close yes. to the mention of his name. Oh, yes. And he yes. will Hallelujah. give you the desires of your yes, heart. He when will. you commune yes. with him, it's like a father and a child, and it is it is a feeling that's indescribable. And I am so thankful tonight. Those experiences, the experience of receiving the Holy Ghost and being baptized in Jesus' name is something that you will never forget when yes. you have experienced Amen. that. The world can't give it to you, and the world can't take that away from you. It is a promise from God, and God sticks to his promises. In Acts 2.38, Acts 2.38 was powerful back then when Peter preached it, and it's still powerful yes, today. Yes. Yes. And it brings us, it brings many to repentance, and it brings many into the kingdom of God. Yes. We don't need a title. We don't need people to say, oh, they're Christians. But we do need is a demonstration to the world that when Christ gets a hold of us, when you enter a yes. room, that they Ooh. should be able to feel yes. God. Yes. They Amen. should be able to yes. feel the presence of the yes. Lord without us having to say one word. Oh, that's a truth. And that will, we must keep rooted and grounded in God's word. Wow. When things go wrong, when we feel wow. weak, when we are under attack from the enemy, oh, when we are tempted, geez. only Jesus can fill the void yes. and help yes. us. Yes. Back then, in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, Jesus walked with the disciples. Today, he is in us. Ooh, man, He's not right. walking yes. next to us. He is in us. And when oh, you utilize you, the power of God, when you speak Jesus. the name of Jesus, if we could get our minds to understand what power, oh, the wow. words that come out of our mouth when we say Amen. Jesus, yeah. Yeah. the Amen. power that we have, we are victorious. Oh, yes. And, and so I believe that we are our own worst, worst enemies when we do not realize what power we have oh, yes. with God. Hallelujah. We need the Lord each and every day. When we have Jesus, everything's different. Oh, when I got baptized and I was filled with the Holy Ghost, when I went out the next day, I told everybody that I came into contact. <laughs> yes. hey, I was baptized in Jesus' name. Yes. I got the Holy Ghost. You need to come to, to uh, the, uh, our Pentecostal church. I was inviting everybody to church. I didn't care who they were. Yes. I, it was, you know, and, and we should never lose that. Yes. We should Amen. never become complacent in our oh, walk with God. God. We see things with love and compassion, and suddenly life takes on a new meaning. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Listen to me. We need the Lord. 
The Lord will give us power, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, patience, everything that can outlast the world as long as we want it, we can have it. That's right. Esau made a mistake. Esau didn't value the things of God. He was the firstborn of Isaac and Rebekah, the grandson of Abraham, Sarah. Mm -hmm. What a lineage, what a heritage. But instead, he lightly regarded the things of God. Yes. And now when we read the scriptures, instead of reading the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau, we read the God of Isaac, Abraham, Abraham Isaac, and jo- Jacob. Mm-hmm. Amen. Esau forever missed out on the opportunity to be a part of the eternal family of God. Yes. That's right. That was his right because he was the firstborn. Mm-hmm. That was his title. He was entitled to that. But he disregarded the things of God, and he took things lightly. There was no reverence of God in him. Yes. He didn't value his birthright. Yeah. Before his birth, he struggled with his brother Jacob in the womb of their mother. God revealed to Rebekah, you, there are two nations struggling within your womb, and the older will serve the younger. Well, that could be said, but that didn't mean that Esau had to just go with the flow. He could have put up a fight and said, you know what? I'm going to fight. Yeah, the younger will serve. I, I will serve the younger because God says, but maybe if I fight hard enough, I just might change God's mind. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He could have. It, I mean, you never go down without a fight. Mm-hmm. And that's that's my opinion, though. But, but in spite of that, Esau would disqualify himself as a chosen one because he didn't value God's things. We all know that Esau traded his birthright, either... However, you've heard it, a pot of stew, a pot of lentil soup. Um, He only saw what was in front of him. All he saw was that he was hungry. Mm -hmm. He didn't see what that hunger was going to cost him in the long run. That's right. He didn't see a far off. All he saw was what was in front of him. Losing the drive of, of his passion for God, not having a passion for God, he became complacent. He was a mighty hunter. He used to hunt, and and he was a mighty hunter. He hunted whatever he killed, that's what he ate. So if he became hungry, that means he became complacent Mm -hmm. in his hunting skills. He got lazy. When he got lazy, the hunt became unfruitful. And then he found himself in trouble. When we get complacent and when we get lazy, Mm -hmm. that's when we find ourselves in spiritual trouble. Mm -hmm. Applying this scenario to ourselves today, we must always stay hungry for the Lord. Oh, yes. We must always seek yes. the Lord with all our soul, mind, and strength. Yes. Amen. Amen. Do we find ourselves famished and settling for anything? Does the aroma of this world steal our attention from our true God? Oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, never let me find myself to where the things I pray daily keep my eyes focused on you, Lord. Yes. Keep my ears sensitive to your voice. What things can we be tempted to trade in for God today? If it's not alcohol, it could be drugs, might be excessive vacations, fun things, anything that takes you away from the things of God. What draws your attention away from God? Too much work? Uh, Money? Will those things get us to heaven? It's not a sin to employ ourselves to provide for our house. It's not a sin to go on vacation, but in moderation, we have heard it preached. And when we listen and be mindful and obedient to the Word of God, we can't go wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall seek me, when ye shall search for me with all your heart. Mm -hmm. It's up to us. No, our pastor's not going to walk up to us and twist our arm and says, oh, you've got to live for God, Sister Vicki. Or, you know, you, you have to be here. No, no. God is a gentleman. He will not force himself on us. Amen. Amen. That's right. When we serve God, who are we really trying to please? Do we attend services because, well, pastor says we have to be there and I'm going to be there and, and, and you know, I, I've got to make an appearance. Well, if that's why we're coming to church, we're in trouble. Amen. Because the Lord knows what's in here. The Lord does not like to be second best. Yes. Esau's conscience, conscience may have been seared having sold his birthright and losing his blessing that should have been bestowed upon him for being the firstborn. 
being left with a secondary blessing, he had great anger toward his brother Jacob for the trickery and the desire to he desired to murder him. I would say that that happens a lot today when people come against you and, and cause us to lose our temper and, and, and it is our carnality that causes anger and hate to rise up. But he had a lot to be angry for. But therefore, Jacob knew what he had done, but Jacob was very tr tricky and he went to live with, his, the mother sent him to live with her relatives. But even in all the mess, Esau found prosperity. Yeah. But Esau's prosperity was not because of himself. Esau's prosperity came because God made a promise to That's Isaac. True. That's true. When Isaac prayed a blessing over Esau, God honored that, that blessing. Not because of Esau, but because of Isaac. Esau was a praying uh, a pray Esau had a praying father and God honored his prayer and he blessed Esau with material things. God honors faithful people and the Lord is the only one who never breaks a promise. Amen. I can make a promise today and tomorrow who knows. Mm -hmm. Esau never showed any care toward the things of God. We never read that Esau sought to please God. Not once. God help us not to be like Esau. Proverbs 23, 23 states, buy the truth and sell it not. Yes. Also Hallelujah. wisdom and instruction and oh, understanding. Yes. We have been taught over and over through the preached word of God, how to be successful in living for God. Our pastors guide, they teach, they preach. It is up to us to listen. Are we filling ourselves with God's word? Are we being obedient? God help us. How we live our life not only affects us, but it affects our families, our co-workers, our neighbors, and all those around us. And people watch us, even when you think that no one is watching. Amen. Someone is yep. always watching. Right. Someone is always depending on you. Amen. As a result, Esau's earthly goals and lack of godly ambition his descendants, the Edomites, lived in the shadow of the children of Jacob. In 2 Samuel 8, 14, and 1 Chronicles 18, 11, and 12, tells us that David subdued the Edomites, killing 18,000 of them and subjecting them to his rule. The children of Esau consistently lived under the thumb of the younger Jacob. We read the conflicts in battle all through the Bible, the disputes that began in the womb and continued long after the death of Jacob and Esau. The Edomites achieved a few victories in battle, but even then they tasted few victories. Their ancestors, ancestors had sold out their birthright and blessing, dooming them to a lesser status, all because Esau failed to realize he needed the Lord. Jacob realized his need for God. And he relied and depended on him. He knew that he couldn't make it without the Lord or without his protection. In fleeing to his mother's home country, Genesis 28 tells us that he slept at Bethel. And it was there that God blessed Jacob with a vision, angels ascending up and down Jacob's ladder. Right. Jacob yeah. received a wonderful promise from the Lord at Bethel. In Genesis 28:15, and behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoke to thee of. Mm -hmm. That is an awesome promise. Yes, amen. Jacob was on the run from his brother, who was after him to kill him, and probably, I can assume he wasn't sleeping very well, mm -hmm. was worried, fear mm -hmm. of the unknown. That's right. Perhaps he was scared of the place he was going that he didn't know where he was going to. But God had a different plan, and God gave Jacob that promise in his time of need. There is nothing more satisfying than a promise from God in our time of need. I'm sure that there are some listening tonight that you have leaned on a promise that God made you. And in your time of need, God turned out to be faithful. Yes. Amen. amen. God always keeps his promises. Yes, he does. That's right. In our Bibles are many promises, and our God has kept every one of them. He's the only one that has never broken. 
And that's the God that we serve today. Thank you, and that's a God that we can serve tomorrow and forevermore. Yet there are times that God works on our behalf and we don't recognize it. And it's because we are seeing things in the carnal eye. There are times that we see brothers and sisters or other people and you see, oh man, look, they're, they're excited because they got blessed with whatever it is. And, and you're sitting here thinking, well, when is God going to work on my behalf? God's time is not our time. God's ways are not our ways. Right. Jacob knew and understood, uh, understood he needed God, but he was spiritually, but spiritually he wasn't tuned in because in Genesis 28, 16, it states, and Jacob awakened out of his sleep and he said, surely the Lord is in this place and I knew it not. Yeah. I want to know when I'm in God's presence. Amen. Yes. Amen. I don't ever want to be in the house of God and there be a move of God and I miss it because mm -hmm. I don't ever want to find myself in that place because that's a fearful thought. Yes. Sometimes we feel that God doesn't answer our prayers or that he doesn't care about us because it's not happening when we want. But here we are wondering, when is it my turn? Remember, again, God's time is not our time. We don't live for God on feelings. So when we feel like, oh, he's not doing, I feel like God's not, it's not our feelings that moves yeah. God. Amen. His yes. ways are not our ways and his Amen. thoughts are not our thoughts. He knows the beginning from the end. He knows, he sees, he cares, and he understands. And he is always working on our behalf, even yes. when we don't see it. Mm -hmm. He misses nothing. Jacob's story should give us confidence that we have the promise that Emmanuel means God with us at all times. Amen. He walks with us daily. His joy is our strength. And he tells us he will never leave us nor forsake us. I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Yes. What do we need God to help us with tonight? Is it financial? He's taking care of that. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills in Psalms 50, 10. Is it spiritual? In John 10, 10, he says, the thief cometh not but for to steal and kill and to destroy. And I am come that they may have, might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Amen. The joy of the Lord is our strength. The Edomites were the Israelites' cousins. We, I have cousins and my cousins and I, we butt heads about. Yet they never ever helped Israel. Their hatred destroyed, destroyed their relationship that could have been beneficial to them. Instead, they built their homes in the clefts of the rocks and they lived apart. While Israel possessed the promised land that God had promised them. Jacob made a vow in Genesis 28, 20 to 22. If God will be with me and, I, and keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and clothing to wear, that I come again to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God and this stone which I have set up for a pillar shall be God's house and all and of all that you give me I will surely give you one tenth to you God promised to meet Jacob's needs and Jacob in turn promised to serve the Lord we must present our bodies a living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto him which is our reasonable service mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. God hated the pride of Esau he hated he hates pride today because mm -hmm. Esau was prideful, his descendants committed the sin of pride. Pride would usher in the fall of the Edomites, and the Lord sent Obadiah to speak against the Edomites because of their pride, proud and vain ways. He would make them the least among the nations and cause them to be utterly despised. Obadiah 1 and 3, the pride of thine heart hath deceived thee, and thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? Amen. The living conditions that the Edomites had was high in the rocks. And it, they could look down and see everything and everyone from up high where they lived. And they had an advantage so that as people went through, if they were enemies, they could attack and, and, and they had the upper hand. Or if they were travelers that had possessions, they could rob them. And, and, and that's just, that's what they did. So... In Numbers 20, they refused Israel passage through that land when Israel went to go through there, even though Israel wanted to pay for the water that their lives drank. In peace, Esau received Jacob when he returned home,
but that peace was a temporary remedy to their problems. Amos 9 spoke that the house of David would regain control over Edom. Malachi said, Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places, thus saith the Lord of hosts. They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. The Edomites would never get rid of Esau's mistake. That mistake would follow them wherever they went. In Numbers 24, 18, Edom shall be a possession, Seir also shall be a possession for his enemies, and Israel shall do valiantly. Regardless of how much pride the Edomites felt, or had they, had, they would never measure up to the children of Jacob, the prideful Edomites would always hate their Israelite cousins. We need God. We need the Lord. And in closing tonight, the Lord has given us everything we need to be successful. In searching the scriptures, I came across the two tens of the Bible. The chapter 2, verse 10. In Luke 2.10, God is a joy bringer. In Ephesians 2.10, he's the character builder. In Philippians 2.10, he's the adorable name. In Colossians 2.10, he's the fulfiller of life. Amen. Hebrews 2.10, he's the captain of salvation. And in Revelations 2.10, he's the crown giver. He bestows yes. gifts upon us daily. John 4.13, he gives us the gift of salvation. Amen. In Acts 4.13, the gift of transformation. In Amen. Ephesians 4.13, he gives us the gift of inspiration. Oh, yes. In Philippians 4.13, he gives us the gift of power. Hallelujah. And in 1 Thessalonians 4.13, he gives us the gift of consolation. Lord, give God your all, and he will give you his all. And we can never outgive our God. Amen. When you cry out to God, He is on His way. Oh, yes. Thank you. God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. We worship you, God. God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Sister Vicki, for the word. Amen. What a mighty word. Amen. You know, you have each one of us have a testimony. Mm -hmm. Each one of us to touch somebody else. And I hope that somebody's watching tonight that, you know, these words that were spoken tonight, that will peck your heart Amen. and say, I Hallelujah. need Jesus. Because in these days, more than ever, Amen. we need Amen. him today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Because, you know, the Bible says that in him we live and we move and we have our being. Yes. And without him, as I live through this, as I go through life, I know that without Him, I am nothing. Amen. Without Him, yes. I have nothing. Oh, but with Him, we have salvation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We have hope. We have the heavenly heavens yes. to enter yes. into the gates. Thank you, Jesus. And for Him to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Yes. Amen. 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 And something tells me that as we as a shower of God and a, as children of God. Amen. That we have a relationship with God. Yes. That when we do we have that relationship with God. That that we should live in in such a way that those who know us, they don't know God. They yes. they don't know God. Yes. They will come to know God because yes. of us. Amen. Amen. Sister Vicky, I appreciate. Amen. Yeah. That was I appreciate that word. Hallelujah. Thank you. Because, Thank you, because Lord. there's no doubt in my heart that at what I face, as long as I've known you, you have been faithful Amen. to church. Hallelujah. And like I said, it's, it's not just being faithful, but to be in the presence of God, to be there. Not because some people don't go because the pastor's not preaching, somebody else is preaching. Oh, somebody else is preaching. They don't go. Yeah. No. It's you go because you go to worship God, to be, yes. to have, Hallelujah. to be in His presence, Hallelujah. to be with Him, 
Hallelujah. And to be, there is nothing like it, brothers and sisters, who's watching tonight. And Sister Vicky, you pour out your heart tonight. And I hope somebody, you know, God, this word will not come back void, but will touch somebody. In Jesus' name we pray. God. Let's raise our hands right now. I feel the Holy Ghost here. God, we thank you, Lord, for your word tonight. We thank you for using Sister Vicky for anointing her for the word that you've spoken tonight, God. We thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit. That today, the word of God says, today is the day of salvation. For anybody, anyone who comes to God, to God, today is the day. So if you're out there, God, touch those hearts, God. Touch those that's life, God. Touch them, Lord Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Amen.